Dan, bienvenido a Seaboard Gallery. Estoy tan agradecida. Realmente eres un hombre maravilloso. Una obra espectacular. Estas vitrinas que decoraste son divinas. Me encantan. Estoy tan comprometida a que el mundo entero sepa la magnífica obra que tú has podido hacer. Y ahora con la transición de Seaboard Gallery International es perfecto porque el mundo entero sabrá que tenemos al mejor artista del, de estos tiempos. Agradezco también a Regional que es el que nos ha puesto toda la decoración. Los muebles son espectaculares y gracias Dan por la confianza. Es una confianza maravillosa. Thank you. Gracias por invitarme, Norma. Gracias. Gracias. My name is Jonathan Rose, and this is Dan Daly. Now, let me, before, I can introduce you to Dan Daly by quoting Paul J. Smith, Director Emeritus of the American Craft Museum, now the Museum of Arts and Design. It is impressive to see the broad spectrum of creativity ranging from well-designed functional objects to personal sculptural expressions. And quoting Dan Daly, every idea begins with a sketch. Let me ask you, Dan, how did you come to do your exhibit here with Norma at Save Our Gallery? Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, Norma asked me if I would uh, consider having uh, my work here and to have an exhibition. And um, I was very intrigued by it because it's, it was an opportunity to, in a way, embrace a new direction because it's been a, a painting gallery, primarily a gallery of paintings, and much more about image. Early on in, in say, the 1970s, uh, I did much more. To have an opportunity now to come into a gallery which is focused on painting and imagery, I felt was really uh, terrific, so I wanted to do it. And then uh, we worked together, really, to uh, compose this exhibition as a, it's a way, uh, her curated take on my work with selections. Um, and as you can see, most of it's on the wall. So the term freaked out and pissed off, uh, you know, it's not a new term at all, but it just one day it really caught my attention and I wrote it on my list of titles. And then I finally got around to making a drawing about what that is. And to me, this was the portrayal of that term, freaked out and pissed off. She's uh, kind of an imperfect beauty. I mean, she's a classic beauty at some level, but then not exactly and at the same time alluring because of her see-through shirt and so on, and also um, totally powerful in her gesture. So this is what I'm trying to convey. This is from 2012, so it precedes the, uh, yeah, sure. the Me Too movement, but on the other hand, it doesn't. And I don't think that I had that in mind at all, that that's what she was uh, pissed off about or freaked about. I think it had more to do with um, who knows, something going on in her life about a particular thing. So I, it never occurred to me that that would be the, uh, you know, that it would be that relevant in today. But in a, in a funny way, it is. Why is it called Found in Translation? I think that maybe is an allusion to the fact that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the uh, first artist who uh, is, say, not from South America or Cuba, who's showing in this gallery. And um, that to me also was special. I mean, that was really an honor to be invited. I remember getting together with you before and uh, we needed to use a translator so that you would understand each other, but she selected all this work. No, I, I would say it's co-curated. She made selections. I made a couple of suggestions um, as, the, as the process went on. But then there's another language in the work itself. So that, that, that to me is something that I've uh, relied upon for a long time, that when you make something and you can see that it, it visually touches someone because they, they respond to it, there's a kind of sense of familiarity with the situation portrayed. I think it doesn't need to be Spanish or English or French or Italian or German or anything. It can be 
uh, just the visual language. It's like music as well. It's, it's the language of art, and that's very special. Good point. And I think also that I search for a kind of universality in the in imagery that I, that I use because I, I see myself as kind of a symbolist. I, I try to create iconic images. Not, not, when it's a portrait, quite often it's not of a specific individual, it's a portrait of a character type. Let's talk about um, vitriolite. This, this piece is, um, the heads have vitriolite mosaics and they're, they're tiny little pieces. Um, that has something to do with my propensity to make smaller and smaller detail to get a person to look at it closely. And so that's what these tiny eyeballs with mirrors behind them are about, these green reflecting eyes set in the, the mosaic of these dog heads. The theme is the circus, but it's really abstract take on the circus. So these characters who have dog masks, I'm calling singing dogs, they're a little bit based on uh, the history of the Etruscan bias. The Etruscan bronze has always intrigued me, and so I like classic vessel form, and I've turned it into a language of my own. I want to talk about your 3D drawing. Okay, Mirage is a, a drawing of a woman uh, at a window, but it could also be seen as a woman at a railing, uh, maybe on a boat, maybe on a porch. And what's disappearing into the horizon as the scale changes in the, um, in the line quality is a, um, maybe a desert, maybe a, a field, maybe an ocean. So it's a deliberately ambiguous image with, I hope, a sense of uh, space and also a distant sort of uh, feeling expressed by the, the woman in, in her facial expression. It's made with um, copper and, and brass uh, and bronze wire, which I buy as uh, stock material in lengths and cut up and then uh, heat till it's uh, cherry red and then get it soft, which is a process called annealing. And then I can bend it smoothly to any curve that I want and then um, cut and fit and solder it together with silver solder at the joints. And then also the, the whole piece is, um, once it's finished and filed and cleaned up all those solder joints, it's um, fit into a wood frame as part of the piece. And the frame allows for some depth so that the piece casts a shadow into it. And the shadow is meant to, um, to be part of the overall image of the piece. I came upon the idea, I played around with it, I made a couple, and then now I've made maybe 30 of them. They're very direct translations from the black ink drawings on white paper in my sketchbooks. So thank you very much. Dan, oh, you're welcome. nice talking Dan. to you.